We're going to turn now to medical breakthroughs. Featured in the new book, it's called The Other Side of Impossible. It's all about people battling chronic illnesses, running out of medical options, and finding hope in unconventional approaches. Mara Schiavocampo is here with all the details. Good morning, Mara. Lara, good morning. The stories featured in this book are really remarkable. A child making a full recovery from a painful illness, a woman confined to a wheelchair walking again, and all because they wouldn't stop looking for answers. At just three years old, Susanna Meadows' son, Shepard, was diagnosed with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, an autoimmune disease that causes swelling in the joints, pain, and fatigue. He was having trouble getting out of bed. He would walk with a limp. His doctors prescribed medication, but it made him sick. And with the pain getting worse, Susanna felt helpless. She took a leap of faith and researched options outside the realm of conventional medicine. It was desperation that led you there. It was desperation, absolutely. Susanna removed dairy, gluten, and limited sugar from her son's diet and added fish oil, probiotics, and a Chinese anti-inflammatory herb. After six weeks, he said, Mommy, my knees don't hurt anymore. <laughs> and ran out of the room. And you can imagine how stunning that was for us. <laughs> While there's no way to know for sure what helped him, I believe that it was this uh, protocol that we tried. Once a skeptic of non-science-based medicine, Susanna wrote about her son's recovery in The Other Side of Impossible, where she profiles six other stories of people who hope to defy the medical odds, going beyond conventional medicine to take on daunting conditions. One of those stories is of Terry Walls, a clinical professor at the University of Iowa, diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2000. After just three years, she was confined to a wheelchair. But Terry is a fighter, spending nights pouring through scientific articles looking for the latest studies on MS. She created a food plan, an extreme form of the paleo diet, eating up to 12 cups of fruits and vegetables a day. At nine months, I got on my bike and I biked around the block for the first time. I'm crying, my uh, wife's crying, my kids are crying. 17 years later, she has regained almost all of her muscle function. Such an amazing story. Now, as for Susanna's son, he's now off all pain medication and he is pain free. She notes that the people that she profiled in this book did work in consultation with their doctors on these unconventional treatments. And Lara, she said the one thing they all had in common, perseverance. They would not give up. Uh, it's that power of positive thinking. Amazing, Mara. Thank you. And Dr. Jen is with us now to talk more about it. So what is your assessment on the link between these elimination diets and chronic disease? Well, there's not a lot of good research out there yet, and hopefully there will be. But let me explain to you basically what is involved in an elimination diet. If you look at this cascade here, this is kind of the, the major food groups that's part of the typical American diet. Yeah. And the thinking is they all may contribute to a common pathway that ends in some type of inflammation that a lot of chronic illnesses have. With an elimination diet, you, you break that down, you bear it down to the bottom level, you take all these things out, and then you slowly add them in, reintroduce them. To see them. which ones are the ones that are causing if a problem possible. or not. So it's another way of thinking you're really kind of taking all the junk out of our diet and eating clean and the thinking is that that may reduce inflammation now there's not a lot of research out there yet on this. Nutritional science is lagging way behind medical science. Mm -hmm. We need to understand more, but you've probably heard the saying, let food be thy medicine. Right. This is kind of an example. Yeah, we just saw that woman with MS. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a great uh, story. But there, there are some patient scenarios that should not try this. Yeah, I think anytime you take something to an extreme and you potentially sacrifice or compromise something that is proven and known to work in most patients, then that becomes a little risky. If you're, if you're becoming malnourished in the course of of this elimination diet, which generally is a temporary thing. It's not meant to be totally long-term in most cases. I think that's a problem. And again, Mara said it at the end, the best, in my opinion, holistic health care is when you incorporate the best of Western medicine mm -hmm. to the best of non-Western medicine and really individualize that for a patient Do and find, find what works. But nutrition and food has to be a big part. It's, of our, it. it's our fuel, just yeah, like a definitely, car. Definitely. Uh, and, and Mara mentioned perseverance, and I'm a huge proponent of that. The you put out is the energy you get back. Right. Does that really play into this? Absolutely does. In medicine and science, we call that the placebo effect. This is real. This doesn't mean it's fluff in your mind. It's thought to work up to 
30% of the time, which means if you go into something expecting a positive outcome, like your hip surgery, mm -hmm. you have a good chance of experiencing that. And by the way, the flip side is also true. Yep. It's called the nocebo effect. If you go into something expecting the worst, you have a really good chance that yeah. that's what you're going to feel. So yeah. this leads this. It's so important. This is really an important story. Yeah. I hope, I yeah. pray it's all good. Thank you so much, yes. Dr. Jen. And the other side of impossible is out now. Check it out.